this video. Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am that British guy and wasn't fast lane mental. It seemed like the whole show was built to just annoy the fans for the majority. I mean, you had Asuka winning in not very convincing fashion against Mandy Rose. Mm, not great. We had Becky and Charlotte not really having a match. Yeah. The triple threat for the WWE title seemed to be initially designed to just ruin any momentum that Ali had before he went away for his injury. I mean, the, the crowd turned against the match at the beginning and all three of the competitors because they felt they were being screwed over. Whatever that thing with Kofi and the bar was, and I'm sure they're all kind of cogs in a bigger machine to build to something at WrestleMania, but it just seemed like they were trying to go out of their way to annoy the crowd as much as possible. Almost in a way to kind of make the ending, the, the kind of big, happy, crowd-pleasing ending that they gave with the Shield winning, um, kind of the antidote for that, and it was really, really bizarre. But, on the terms of bizarre, I thought, why not do something bizarre and out there myself? And bearing in mind this is being recorded before Raw and Smackdown this week, so this is only with what we know coming out of Fastlane, I am going to take this opportunity to very, very quickly run through the card of WrestleMania 35, at least how I see it as of now. So we'll start with the pre-show matches. Pretty bog standard what they're going to be this year, same as last year. You've got the men's and the women's battle royal, and likelihood is we're going to have the cruiserweight match in here as well. Buddy Murphy facing off against whoever wins the tournament. And to be honest, I think it's likely to be Cedric Alexander. WWE seem to be very hot on him still. I prefer it to be somebody else, but he seems to kind of be their golden boy on the face side of the cruiserweight division. So I can see it being him taking on Buddy Murphy. So moving on to the main card. Um, we've obviously got two matches now set in stone. Set in stone. We have Seth Rollins taking on Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. And we have the Raw Women's title match. Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte versus Becky Lynch in a triple threat match. Now we do also have a few other matches that are certainly highly likely, shall we say. Obviously with Batista coming back a couple of weeks ago and him facing off with Triple H tonight. Presumably that is going to lead into a match between the two of them at WrestleMania. Otherwise, what was the point of bringing Batista back? With Shane turning on The Miz after their match against the Usos, you would think that is leading into a match as well. Shane always seems to appear on the WrestleMania card and... The Miz is kind of one of those company stalwarts who always gets uh, a fairly high profile feature match. So that makes sense as well. We also have started seeing bits and pieces bubbling up between Randy Orton and AJ Styles. And again, they are two big marquee names that you can't really leave off a WrestleMania card. So it would make sense that the two of those have some kind of a grudge match at WrestleMania. And finally, in the kind of highly likely stakes, Daniel Bryan, I presume, will be defending the WWE title. And it seems even more likely now that Kofi is going to feature into this match. He's going to finally get his opportunity. And I can see them working Kevin Owens into that match as well. After all, he didn't take the pin. It was Mustafa Ali who took the pin in their match at Fastlane. And with him potentially getting frustrated with that, maybe even seeing a bit of a heel turn from him and forcing his way back into that match, we could very easily see Brian Owens and Kofi facing off for the WWE title. And if Kofi has got two heels to beat, that kind of would make his win, if he were to win, that little bit sweeter. So now we move on to the matches that are all very much in flux. 
and I have kind of had to look at what has been happening and predict from there where I think things might be going. So in terms of the US title picture, obviously we saw the impromptu Fatal 4-Way match last night. I do think they want to keep Ray and Andrade in these kind of matches to keep that feud going, but I can't see the two of them getting on the card in their own match at WrestleMania, unfortunately. And if we're going to keep having these multi-man matches for the United States title, I think maybe we need to add a few extra elements. Um, wouldn't surprise me if we see a ladder match or certainly some kind of stipulation match here. And why not add a couple of extra components in there as well. Let's have Ray and Andrade in there still. Our truth maybe as well. Um, Ali had a very, very good showing in the WWE title match and has kind of been mixing it up with these guys. He was, after all, meant to be in the Elimination Chamber as well. So why not give him an opportunity at the mid-card title? And there's been a lot of kind of references, shall we say, especially from our truth towards John Cena. And we are of the understanding that he's going to be around in New York for WrestleMania weekend. So why not put him in this match as well? He has a very long history with the US title. It also means that he doesn't have to be around too much to actually build up some kind of a storyline. Most of the other guys going in can kind of build that up and we can get John Cena kind of inserted in there either pretty much now or right at the last minute and that gives him a shot on the WrestleMania card as well. Sticking with the SmackDown belts, Obviously the Usos retained the tag titles and it seems like something is brewing up with the Hardys. They kind of came to the rescue of Ricochet and Aleister Black. So we could see them facing off against maybe the Bar or Sanity or some kind of formation of heel tag teams in order to work their way into a tag team title match. Otherwise, why bring Matt back now? Why bring them back as the Hardys? Presumably this is building towards something for Wrestlemania. Why not give them a title match against the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Titles? Now on the Raw side of things, um, we kind of need to move away from Gable and Rude, to be honest. They've had their time with the belts. They've had their match at Fastlane to try and win them back and they were unsuccessful so much so that they actually took the pin so I don't think they're going to feature however I can see Alistair Black and Ricochet still being involved perhaps even actually winning the belts at Wrestlemania because presumably once we come out of uh, Wrestlemania 35 they will feature on the main card full time so why not give them the belts at Wrestlemania so obviously we need to have them in a match with the Revival. Heavy Machinery have been making waves as well, so they could feature in that match. And potentially, whether they're injured still or not, I'm not entirely sure when their return is kind of penciled in for, but maybe the Authors of Pain could kind of feature into that as well, because they were kind of unceremoniously kicked away from the titles and then kind of relegated away because of injury so that could be quite a nice return for them or we may even just get a straight tag match between Ricochet and Alistair Black and The Revival. Moving on to the women's tag belts it's been strongly rumoured that there's going to be kind of different teams from different places being involved in this match so obviously we're going to have Sasha and Bailey defending their belts there seems to have been a lot being made of the Iconics on SmackDown. They're kind of cutting promos and using social media as a means of kind of highlighting that although Sasha and Bailey said they're going to be going around everywhere to defend these belts, well, you haven't shown up on SmackDown yet and we've been waiting for you, so maybe you should show up on SmackDown and give us a chance. So it would be a good chance for them to feature in this match. And I think it may be possible for some NXT blood to be thrown into this match as well. They've already gone down to NXT and said that they're willing to defend these belts. And two women that have already featured on the main card at Royal Rumbles, Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai, 
They're a tag team on NXT anyway, so why not put them in this match in kind of the way that Alistair Black and Ricochet have already been put into title matches on the Raw roster. Bring Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai in, even if it is just for this one kind of marquee match. And also with Nia Jax and Tamina's attack on Beth Phoenix and Natalia, I can kind of see that continuing. I'm hoping that we don't get Tamina and Nia versus Beth and Natalia at WrestleMania, but maybe we get a couple of matches and a couple of bits and pieces of storyline development happening on Raw. And if Natalia and Beth Phoenix can kind of overcome that, then they can feature themselves into this match as well. Because there has been talk of a few legends kind of popping up and being put into tag matches. Most notably, Lita and Trish have been mentioned, but they haven't been around for a long time. And Beth getting a bit physical at Fastlane leads me to think that her and Natalia could easily feature in this tag match. Finally, with his return at Fastlane after months out with leukemia, Roman Reigns has got to feature on the WrestleMania card in some capacity. Now, whether he comes out with Dean Ambrose and they have another tag match, I kind of don't think they will do that because they can't have all the shield together because of obviously Seth Rollins facing Lesnar. So it's likely that Roman will just be in a one-on-one -on -one match. And I see that he will possibly be in a match either with Lashley or Drew because of their match at Fastlane. But because he kind of ate the pin and because he seemed to be the more vocal one on Raw recently, I think it's more likely that Roman Reigns will have a featured match against Baron Corbin. Now, I'm not particularly a fan of that match, but I feel that's the way they're kind of pushing things. And whether Dean maybe comes out in Roman's corner or he kind of fights off Drew and Lashley if they try and help Corbin out in some way I'm not sure or whether he just is not a part of Wrestlemania at all I guess we will see as the weeks go on and then after Wrestlemania based on what's going on with his contract is he now going to re-sign was the whole thing a work from the beginning I'm not sure and I think to keep that level of mysticism up it would be worthwhile him not featuring on the card at all. You will notice there are two glaringly big omissions in this. First the IC title and second the Smackdown women's title. Now on the Smackdown women's side yes we had a bit of a to do with Mandy and Sonya after Mandy's match but I can see that kind of playing out more on SmackDown and potentially in the Women's Battle Royal. Maybe with them either eliminating each other or one eliminating the other and then the victor kind of ultimately going on to win that. Um, but I can't see that featuring into a title match and I don't really see anybody else on the SmackDown roster that's in a position at the moment to challenge for the belt. We kind of need to wait until after WrestleMania. We have a little bit of a shake up and we bring some of the Raw women over to SmackDown. Maybe an Alexa Bliss or a Nia Jax or an NXT call up potentially moving over to SmackDown and kind of forcing their way straight into the title picture. But at the moment, I just can't see anybody ready to mix it up with Asuka because the two main people that they had are both involved in the Raw match. And as well with Finn, there's not a lot really going on in the undercard, unfortunately. The only place I can maybe see something happening is because he has his match with Lashley. Maybe Drew tries to get involved and is a bit unsuccessful. Maybe he can force himself into an IC title match. But the card that I was building, I based on the 14 match card as of last year. And that includes the three pre-show matches. So unless it's a kind of a quick match um, or one of these other matches is very short, maybe they could force in a 15th match and we have an intercontinental title match. But as it stands at the moment, I can't really see that happening. So there we go. That is my kind of prediction for how I see the WrestleMania card being built as of right now. Obviously, we've still got four weeks before the event, so who knows what is going to change in that time. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. 
If you like this video, please give it a like and a share. And if you like my channel, please give it a subscribe. It would be very much appreciated. Until next time, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.